Welcome everyone. I'm really excited this morning because I'm gonna start a new series on the Crown Cattle Company YouTube channel that I'm gonna call Forgotten Knowledge. Now I grew up in Ozark County, Missouri. And for those of you who are, are geographically challenged, that's a county in southwestern Missouri in the Ozarks. That's the first county north of the Arkansas line. Now, a lot of you have probably been to Branson on vacation. Ozark County is the next county east of the county that Branson lies in. So if you've been there, you know that the topography is pretty steep and rocky and there's not much uh, area that it looks like you could grow crops in and, and you'd be right. But in creek bottoms and river bottoms, you would find uh, crops growing back when I was a kid and even now. And that's about the only topsoil that's deep enough and fertile enough to grow crops. And we, we had a patch of corn every year that we grew just for livestock feed. And it might vary anywhere from 15 to 20 acres, which would be extremely small by today's standards of scale. But it, was, it provided all the livestock feed we needed. But we raised it a little differently than corn is raised today. Uh, for instance, we, we didn't even know what herbicides were back then, but we still had a weed problem. And to get rid of that weed problem, we did it manually. I was fortunate enough to go to school in a one room schoolhouse where they taught all eight grades. And every spring when school would dismiss for the summer, usually sometime around the middle to the 20th of May, uh, my father would hire about a half dozen kids from my one room schoolhouse to hoe corn manually and get rid of all the weeds. He had planted the corn, you know, probably a month to six weeks earlier, and it was up uh, 10, 12 inches tall. And a lot of the weeds were that tall too. Our main two weeds were Johnson grass and Cucklebur. So he would hire these kids, and I don't know how much he paid them. I know what he paid my sister and I, which was a roof over our heads and three meals a day. Uh, but these kids, he, he paid them, and, and they were uh, a, a like we were. Everybody was poor back then, and they were just happy for the chance to make some money. And uh, he probably paid them based on their age and their ability, because these kids are anywhere from probably third grade to eighth grade. Uh, in age, and uh, he probably paid those more that brought their own hoe. Uh, we provided hoes for those that didn't didn't have them. And it was interesting because very few of the hoes had factory made handles. Most of the handles were made out of a persimmon sapling or, or something like that and whittled down to fit hands. And, and you know where most of the metal parts of hoes are probably when they're new, about six inches uh, deep or wide and uh, some of these had been around for two or three generations and they had been filed so many times they were maybe an inch and a half or two inches uh, in width so they had been used a lot and they had gone through lots of handles but these kids would come out we'd usually start uh, old mid-morning because we had cows to milk and chores to do as probably they did too at home and we'd let the dew kind of dry off and uh, we'd gather probably around 10 o'clock in the morning and start hoeing corn. Probably another interesting fact would be that none of us that were out hoeing corn wore shoes. It was summertime and everybody went barefooted. And you know, a creek bottom didn't, didn't have, we didn't have to worry about stepping on rocks or anything, but, uh, and the cuckle burrs weren't large enough yet to have formed burrs. That's why we were hoeing them, but there were sand burrs and they, they kind of hurt. Now, these fields that we hoed uh, were about a quarter of a mile long, and uh, we, would, we would hoe down one length and come back before we'd get a break. So we, we'd hoe about a half mile before we'd get a break for rest and water. Now the water provided, uh, we brought it with us that morning when we started, and we had our own, I, I call it an Ozark, thermos jug. It was a one gallon glass jar. You know, fill it with water, put in a few ice cubes. Uh, we had frozen ice from the night before in one of those trays in the freezer compartment of the refrigerator that had the lever on it that would cause the cubes to pop out. 
Uh, they're, they're considered antiques now, but that's what we had. And then to keep that water cold, mom would wrap it in an old denim quilted jumper that my dad had worn for winters before that and was worn out, at, but it still held together enough to wrap around this gallon jar and that served as the insulation. And so that was our form of a Yeti cooler back then. And it would keep it uh, pretty cold. But it, as you might imagine, six or eight of us kids drinking out of it, it didn't take long to uh, deplete the water supply. And we needed water. We needed to stay hydrated like you do today. At the east end of this cornfield, we had a spring that came out of the ground, provided great livestock water in both the winter and the summer, cool in the summer, warm in the winter. And if you caught it right where it came out of the ground, dad always thought it was pure enough to, to drink. Once we'd run out of the ice water, one of us would be charged with taking it down to the spring and filling it and, and bring it back. You had to do that while you were on your your rest break though. We had to stay together as we hoed down the rows of corn. Younger kids would just have to hoe one row at a time. The older kids, maybe if you were uh, sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade, you might, and if you had done it before, you might be good enough to hoe two rows on your way down. The eighth grade boys uh, or girls, we hired, uh, dad hired both boys and girls, uh, they might even get to hoe three rows. Now, that's, that was very seldom. I can only remember one eighth grade boy that got to hoe three rows. Dad would always hoe four rows. We'd make our way down, and it, I don't know, I don't remember how long it would take us to hoe a quarter of a mile of corn, but it wasn't done real quickly. We weren't just walking at, at high speed. And some years it was really weedy and would take us even longer. And as you might expect, even for 15 or 20 acres, it would take uh, this group of kids uh, a week or two to get that corn completely hoed and weed free. Now, once uh, we had run through and, and hoed the entire field of corn, uh, dad would hook up uh, on the tractor a two row cultivator, and then he would plow all the area, you know, the area in between the rows of corn. And at that point, the corn was high enough, it was probably hitting the axles of the tractor, and he would call, that was the last time he cultivated it uh, during the year and he would call that laying by the corn. And really we didn't do anything else to the corn until fall came along and it was time to harvest it. Now that was usually in late October, November, uh, when we'd get around to that. And we harvested it by hand. Uh, Dad, mom, me, and my sister uh, would, would pick the corn by hand. We'd throw it in a four wheel wagon pulled by a team of horses. Now, like I said, we had a tractor, but dad preferred to use the horses uh, when we were picking corn because he could have them go forward and stop just by voice commands. He didn't have to get on the tractor and start it up and stop it and turn it off and everything. So it was just easier. The wagon straddled two rows of corn, so it knocked those stalks down. And of course, we were pretty close to the ground because we weren't very old. We would pick the ears of corn off and, and toss them in the wagon. Dad would usually take about four rows on one side. Mom would take about two rows on the other. Uh, and, and we would pick and fill that wagon with ear corn, uh, shuck and all. And uh, then we would, he'd usually unhook the team of horses and then hook the tractor to it to pull it to our corn crib, which is way up on a hill across the road from, from the cornfield. And unloading it, was a chore too. Dad would use a scoop shovel. Now he would put a board uh, at an angle, uh, a big wide board, probably like a 12 inch wide board uh, from the back end down to the floor, from the top of the railing down to the floor. So he had an angle to use the scoop shovel to scoop out this ear corn. Uh, I would usually be throwing it in, you know, a couple ears at a time as fast as I could just to help out, but that didn't move a lot of ear corn. Dad with a scoop shovel was most of it. We would use that ear corn uh, right next to the corn crib. We had what is called a hammer mill. It's basically a feed grinder. Dad would hook it up uh, by way of a belt to a pulley 
a pulley on the rear of the tractor that ran off the PTO. It would drive this huge belt that was probably about six or eight inches wide, and that would power the hammer mill. It made a terribly loud noise. I'm sure that's why my dad was dang near deaf by the time he passed away. Uh, just and, and he would usually make some makeshift earplugs or something while he was grinding corn, but it, it was tremendously loud. But it was what we call cob crush because you'd, you'd ground up the grain, the cob, and the shuck all at once, and it left a very bulky, fibrous feed uh, that the cattle thought was delicious, but it didn't, because it had all the shuck and cob, didn't have a tremendous amount of protein like shell corn would have. So we would buy cottonseed meal in 100 pound sacks and mix with that to bring the protein level up to whatever he needed, what he was feeding. With milk cows, he'd probably bring it up 12, 14%. If we were feeding out calves, he'd probably put in extra cottonseed meal to bring the um, percentage protein up to 16, 17%. So that's, that's how we fed our livestock throughout the winter. Uh, it was entirely from the corn we'd pick uh, and planted and hoed and, and picked the year before. Thanks for watching and, and stay tuned. We're gonna have some more of these uh, videos about forgotten knowledge. Uh, that, that'll deal with, with everything to do with farming, livestock, uh, dairy, hogs, beef cattle, all that. Hope to see you next time.